Hello everyone. This tutorial, I'm going to try to tell you how this logo animation is created by using Flame without any plugins. I am starting with a logo with an alpha channel. First of all, I'm going to add the GMAS tracer node and I will add a GMAS rectangle to it. I will select its axis and drag in Y position to the top. I will give a keyframe for it and go to the last frame and give another keyframe to the end. Now it's Y pink from top to the bottom. If you hit F4, you will see a black and white mask uh, traveling from top to the bottom. Then secondly, I will add a default node. If you decrease the value to zero, there is no deformation. If you increase it, if you scrub it, now you, you see the deformation increases. If you increase it a lot, it will go crazy and there will be some holes and other things. Also playing with the octave value, the edges will be jaggy and uneven. I will start with an amplitude value of 5 at the beginning and I will go to frame 50 and increase it to 25. I will give two keyframes. Key when I scrap the timeline, the amplitude value increasing from 5 to 25 and I will crank up the octave value to its upper limit. Now I have a mat that is moving top to bottom and then I will use a comp node to erase this logo. I will use a blending mode subtract. When we look to the result my mat, my mat is deleting the logo. I will assign a context view to the comp node and when viewing the context to, I assign context to, to this comp node. When viewing it, you can change the position of the mat and adjust uh, the deletion. Go to the first frame and Interactively, you can change the position of the mat. Uh, what I want to do is to edge the deck. Uh, this spreading mat and I want to generate particles from this edge. For doing that, for this purpose, I will add an other G mask. I will duplicate the first one that I, I created and reset its values. Reset selected. And I will connect it to the first one that I created. Now, if you look at the result, there are two masks on top of each other. I will disable auto key and I will drag the second one, minus 10, to the below. Now, there are two masks together and there is a gap between them. I will add an output, second output, and for for the second output, I will enable the second mat, and for, for the first output, I will enable the first mat. Now, if I hit F4 several times, output 1 shows the first mat, output 2 shows second mat. And I will use a comp node to combine them. Combined, there's two outputs as you see. Uh, from the comp node, I select difference. Now I have the difference between these two mats. It's a line. I will use it uh, as a particle emitter. I will add the deform node that I used before to the result of uh, to the, to the end, end of this, this line, and it will deform it the same way that it does for the uh, first mask. When you assign context 1 and context 2 to these deform nodes, 
you see we edge directed and the spreading mat now uh, you can see the result of the context view by uh, hitting space to uh, go to the gmas trace knot and select the second mask and you change the position of the second mask you can control the thickness of this mat mine stand is okay for me now you can create a link between these deforms it will take the same parameters from the first one then i add another comp node and i want to combine this mat with the original logos mat with a multiplication operation now i have limited my deformed mat with the logo and i will add an action node finally it will be the main character of this a main hero of this tutorial i will add a layer and then i will connect the input front with the original logo I will feed the mat with this result and when I go to the result of ac this action you will see that I have the mat that is at the edges of this shape and I will add a particle generator to this image if you hit F4 for the result view now particles are generated from this one. Enter 10,000 for the number of the particles to see what's happening. Now we can see some particles generated from this emitter. They are in the type of lines, so I will change it to squares. I will change the parameters. I will type 30 for the lifetime variance. I will give five for the size and variance of the size i will enter four for the speed and four for the variance of the speed now when we scrap the timeline they are different in size they are different in speed uh, and they are different in lifetime some of them are dying later some of them are dying sooner there are some randoms when we look at closer to the particles they are pointing at us if i enter some values to the rotation variance and spin variance now they are rotating and spinning i will reset the position of the mask and go to first frame and scrap the timeline now as you see the particles are generated from, from the edge of this mat they are going from center to the outside their directions are centered to the outside i'll try to make them do random movements i want them to disappear in time so for for that aim i will add three particle manipulators the first particle manipulator it's not names particle animator i will use a function and i will type a transparency function to here now my particles are disappearing in time and for the second particle manipulator i will use a function and i will change the uh, influence box from position to speed and i will use synaural's expression that is in synaural particles one tutorial you can find it from youtube i will copy the, this text and go to flame and pass it to that field by control v when you enter this uh, expression and look to the result now my particles are following a path that is driven by this function they are not going from center to outside they are 
acting like a tornado or they're acting like they are affected from a hurricane or they are twisting and taking random movements. With the third particle animator, I want to control these movements in some directions. For this, I will change the manipulator type to gravity and the change the influence box to speed and enter 0.8 for the magnetic field. When I hit F4, I will see a widget here. This is gravity manipulator's widget. I will change its rotation minus 90 in X. Now it's pointing upwards. When you scrap the timeline, the particles are following the direction of this widget. I will give some keyframes to it. And for the first frame, I will give a rotation value, rotation Y value of 0. And for the second keyframe, I will enter 90. For the third keyframe, I will enter minus 90. For the fourth keyframe, I will enter 90 again. And at the end, I will enter minus 90 again. And when we look to the result, our widget is pointing. First the pointing to the right and turns left and right and left again. And the particles are following the direction of this widget. When what is good is they are affected by a turbulence. In addition, they are following the widget that we add. And before I render this one, I will go to the animation editor for the G-mask that we created at the beginning. It is now is in and is out. I will make it fast at the start and slow at the end. My mask is uh, traveling fast at the beginning and gets slow at the end. Before render, I will change the anti-aliasing bullet from 1 to 8. Uh, and I will increase the particle count. I will disable the auto key and enter 350,000 for the particle numbers, particle count. I will add a render node, rename it as logo particles, select the destination as schematic view, and before I render, control save your project and hit render. After the render finishes, then I'm going to add motion blur to this particle. I didn't render it with motion blur. I did it consciously because uh, it will increase the render time a lot. So I will add post motion blur to the render. For doing that, I will use a time warp node. I will not change the timing. There, there will not be a time warp or time change. I will just only change the interpolation from mix to motion, activate motion blur, enter 10 for the samples and 0 0.5 for the shutter. Now you have post motion blur. I will render it again with the name of logo motion blur. And finally, I will add some 2D filters to the render. I will add a warp node. It is in matchbox folder. It is, it is coming with the default installation. You don't have to download anything or install anything. It is in the default matchbox folder. Connect your warp to the render, locomotion blur render. Uh, when you hit F4, uh, there is no change because the warp node needs a mat input. For generating a mat, I will use automat. I will feed the mat input with the automat. Automat will generate a black and white mat for us. I will enter a maximum value of 180. And when you look to the result, now it gives it a bubbly look. If you change the amount, the result will change. 
also if you assign context view to it to the word not and change the automatic maximum value the result will change again because your mod is changing and the result of the, of the word not is changing you can use the maximum field to control the effect change the effect as you wish i'm entering 180 also when you go to positive values it is like a glass or water effect both water bubbles or if you when when you go to the negative values the results will change and you get some different effect i will enter minus one for this tutorial it will create some effect like a paint splash filter is affecting whole go and i i want to limit it with a mat for this purpose i will add I will use the mask that we created at the beginning and I will add a comp node and I will comp this warp result on top of the render by using this mat. And lastly, I want to color correct some details with this mask. I, for now, I will just uh, increase the gamma of the shadows now we are very close to the end and I will use the same motion blur at the end I will duplicate the render and call it logo uh, melting I enable it and before rendering Hit Ctrl S to save your project and render. I tried it with different logos. You can change the logo and uh, render it again. 